Ah. It really ain't shit to talk about. I do this shit for the street. Straight like that, though. Yo, I'm Mr. Pyrex man Got my chicken up, whipping up, dropping off and picking up Nigga, what? My picture still up on Seneca Hit a lick and split it up Ben's coupe, I tent it up Spent more on jewels, cause I don't give a fuck They think I'm good, cause I'm up well When a nutshell to labels, I'm a upsell Street credit plus sales They say it's luck well, I proved them wrong A half a million bucks later, yep, still They pray to see us fail I'm really living, crit way out the city limit Back to big up at eight bars, only take 20 minutes uh, and niggas know my face car, run it up, I don't take long, fast albums, I hate y'all's, my shit be really hitting Through a duffel bag, right to the plug like a shuffle pass, impossible I blew through obstacles, niggas struggle past, gave niggas game and they fumbled that I come with that, humble flex, this Cartier dripping, doing jumping jacks, can't take niggas serious I pop big shit and get these rap niggas furious, my bitch be like period Stones in a cube and get cold as Lake Erie get, we get vice from fuck niggas who ain't give me shit I Got my chicken up, whipping up Dropping off and picking up, nigga. What? My picture still up on Seneca. Hit a lick and split it up. Ben's coupe, I tint it up. Spent more on jewels, cause I'm What y'all fuck. niggas know about the streets on the internet talking freely? Never touch this kind of paper and secretly you wanna be me. You hustle off completely, but I'm reading off a cheat sheet. Stacked a couple hundred neatly. You What's going on with you, bro? I can't never get no decoration on my shit till you get on here with me. That's the only time it pop up. <laughs> And I'm the goddamn, I'm the goddamn host. Ain't that some shit? The- <laughs> God damn. <laughs> What's been going on though, bro? All right, all right, shit, man. Back, back on this after about a month since my little, my little incident. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. just getting, just been getting better, being better. Glad to hear that, man. Really glad mm-hmm. to hear that. Yeah, yeah, man. So shoot, me, man. I just been striving to be better than yesterday. You know the motto. Yeah, all I've been up to, pretty much. We got. Yeah, uh, I mean, while we're waiting on our guests, I when I was watching on uh, AW. I mean, what the hell? One minute is from our sponsor oh. before we get to it. Easily maintain your personal hygiene with Theramate Pro by Bitflow. This independent living aid features a body brush for scrubbing and cleaning, a body sponge with a sponge applicator for moisturizers and ointments, a toe sponge and toe applicator for creams an exfoliating pad to remove dead skin, and a mirror to see those hard-to-reach places. Get more information at thera-mate.com. Theramate Pro. Live a better life. What's going on, my brother? What's up, man? How you feeling? I'm been feeling good, good, man. Thank you for asking. As a matter of fact, I like that response, man. That's that's right up my head. I like to ask people how they're feeling, because you could be doing bad and feeling good. (laughs) You could be doing good and feeling (laughs) like shit. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, well, welcome, welcome to our lump, the Lumar. You know, that's my bro. You already know me, Marlon. And y'all, this is one of the best up and coming, hardest hitting motherfuckers out there right now. <laughs> Very high impact. But yeah, oh, yeah, man, yeah. Isaiah Broner, what up? Welcome, welcome. What up, though? Thank y'all for having me, man. I appreciate it. All right, and to piggyback off of what uh, Marlon said on this show, he'll be giving you the platform. Uh, basically, whatever it is you want to talk about, mainly is more of a, a insight on a fan or somebody that don't know who you are can get to know you and, you know what I'm saying, know your struggle or where you come from and, you know, what you're doing now. That's basically the, the motto. So just to kick it off to give you some of the lane to be in, how did you even get started? Well, what was, your, what was the inspiration that you even want to be a wrestler? Let's start with that. Um, like... As a kid, like my cousin, like would bring like um, videos of you know uh, wrestling over or whatever. So I got interested in, through my cousin, mm-hmm. um, and so that was the first thing I wanted to do. But I wound up playing, uh, start playing football, so kind of backed off wrestling for a while. Um, when that didn't work out, um, I started. I got int- I was interested in it, but I was going to pursue bodybuilding, and um, I was in the middle of a prep. And uh, Billy Gunn saw one of my um, football tapes, and he shot me a message, oh. and he told me I should look into you know wrestling. So he told me he was gonna try to give me a workout, uh, try out at the performance center, mm-hmm. and um, you know he sent my stuff over to him. I know he wound up getting fired or whatever, but he still put the word in, and got me a workout. But I wound up going to get trained, uh, trained in Michigan at the House of Truth originally, okay, and started there. 
You said the House of Truth. That's the name of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, Truth Martini. Okay. And I can already tell. I'm like, some say, well, uh, before wrestling, he either had to play <laughs> football or bodybuilding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you could tell because of the the. the I way, can already tell. Movie. You know, like yeah, uh, he, he was bodybuilding a uh, football or something before wrestling or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I, I it, see the two probably tie in together then, if that be the case. If he was able oh, to yeah. watch a, a football <laughs> highlight tape and see the aggression and be able to apply that to the wrestling world, that's big. That's talent. That's, that's being able to know talent when you see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shout out to Billy Gunn, man. So, so what was that first day of training like? Um, I was expecting, you know, nothing, nothing that I wasn't expecting. Um, conditioning wise, it kind of caught me off guard because, like I said, I was prepping for bodybuilding, so I was almost two seventy. Whoa! And you know, rolling, you know, carrying two like I say, like around two sixty five, carrying that weight and not doing like high functioning cardio or conditioning is gonna hit you differently. So oh, going yeah. in there training, Oof. yeah. So it, it's a different now because I'm saying. I'm 260, around 265 now, but I'm more inclined and prepared to, you know, for wrestling cardio. It's a completely different thing people don't understand. Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, hey, man, listen, I think I had one day of training and I was like, yeah, I was like, hell no at it. Cause, you know, and I, I play basketball, but then I'm like, you know what? This, this wrestling training, the little, you know, yeah. I was getting. I was gassed before we even did drills, wrestling drills. I'm like, yeah, man. <laughs> it's like you're using every aspect and every muscle of the body, same as if you're swimming, like almost. Yeah, I can imagine. People so, just don't. People just, yeah, people just think you. I, I can just go in there and do it. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, let me let me pull the camera. Out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let me know. Not what you want. Like pull the camera. So let me ask you this: um, when you uh, when you started. Uh, getting into wrestling, do you, did you notice? Well, you say you went from bodybuilding to wrestling. You ain't go from football to wrestling. So you went from football to bodybuilding, from bodybuilding to wrestling, right? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So out of those three avenues, well, obviously you say wrestling is the most uh, strenuous conditioning. But which one did you feel, even though you wrestling now, which one you think you got more passion for? Wrestling. Okay. Like this, like this came to me. Like wrestling came more natural to me. Like I was really like really good at football. Like don't get me wrong, but after a while, like um, it was like yeah, like like it, it it went away at times or whatever. Um, and especially playing that game, you can't you can't do that. We can't add it. That's when you start getting hurt and stuff like that. And then, mm -hmm. um, it did like leaving transitioning from college and trying to go pro. Like it didn't go how I thought. So like a lot of my passion and stuff went away when that didn't work out. Exactly. I didn't want to play in Canada. I damn sure didn't want to play arena. Like like I got offered to play arena league and I saw how much they was paying. I was like, nah, I'm good. Man, man. I'm telling you, they pay <laughs> bro, I yo your little that that just that part though, I can relate to definitely. What college you went to? Northern Michigan. Okay. Yeah, I could definitely relate, man. That that arena and I I, I went to a, a actual Canadian League tryout, but they don't even pay attention. They just want to get your money. It was two hundred and fifty dollars to even try out, and they had like maybe seventy people out there. They made a killing, bro, and wasn't even paying attention to it. So I could definitely relate to some of those parts there. So when you got into the wrestling, it was a good thing that you was able to find something else to bounce back off of because, you know, and when I say this, you'll know what I'm talking about. A lot of football players in particular, when they don't make it to that next level because they've been drilled in that all their life, they get depressed and mm -hmm. they go for the worst sometimes. So it was a good thing that you was able to bounce back and find something else to, to put your passion to, which was the weightlifting at the time. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I'm saying, basically be able to involve and recreate yourself. That's what's up. That's definitely yeah. what's up. That's exactly like, because you, you don't know what's next. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you prepare your whole life to um, you, go to the NFL. Really, yeah, you be <laughs> lost. <Yeah. laughs> and, 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 <laughs> it don't work. you like, well, what do I do now? You know what I'm saying? Like, So, like, weightlifting. Like, I always love weightlifting. And then, you know, uh, one of the trainers at one of the gyms I was going to, he was like, have you ever thought about competing? And I'm like, hell no. Like, I don't want to. And then, like I started looking into it and seeing everything about it, and I really got um, 
excited about the, you know the prospect of doing bodybuilding and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it was a good transition over, man. So can't complain so, about it. So now, so now going into wrestling, what was like the first thing you noticed? Hey, listen, uh, this is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um. It was nothing like, uh, I guess I was bigger than a lot of people. Um, I was expecting like people my size and stuff like that. Um, but that's pretty much was it. Um, I didn't like, like uh, again, and then the, the conditioning part, I didn't think that condition was going to hit me like that. Uh, I thought it was, was going to be like a breeze. Like, like as I play football and all that stuff, I'm like, huh. And then after the first week or so, it took, it took a lot of, couple of days, uh, a couple of days of training to get adjusted to it or whatever, but it's pretty much it. Everything else, like I'm open to learning. Like I don't, I don't know everything. I don't pretend to know everything. I don't walk into anything with the mindset. Smartest that people. I know everything, you know what I'm saying? So my expectations was I'm going in here to learn. And if it wasn't for me, it just wasn't going to be for me, but I was going to keep an open mind, I committed to it and I was going to do it. So that's just my mindset of, and let me ask you this, like, like what, what was your mindset? How was you able to overcome that obstacle? Obviously, that was the obstacle, the conditioning part. Was it that you had to change up what you was eating? Uh, you had to go to bed earlier. Like, what, what was some of the things you did to, to no, just, 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 just more rep, more reps. Um, gotcha. just getting used to doing it. Um, I didn't really change up much or anything. Uh, obviously, I stopped repping for the bodybuilding show, but. Yeah, just getting used to doing it, um, hitting the ropes, um, you know, doing the proper way of doing it, and the rows came. So once I got conditioned to doing it, like, it, it just became, like, second nature or whatever. That's what's up. So, was, go ahead, Marlon. So, then, you know, I've, I've been following you for about a year now, and it seemed like you get better and better. But now, I'm going to ask you, you like, to, like, to you, when did you start realizing you was getting more confident in the ring? Um, last year. And uh, yeah, I'm still, I still look at it as there's a lot that I can improve on. Like I, I never, I'm never one of the people to be like, oh, I'm, I'm just this, that. And I, I can still get better. I still critique or you know ask for advice and critiques of everything I do. Like it, like I really, really start getting comfortable. Um, after the match I had with Mysterious Q at OWA. That's, that's what that's where, Yeah, that's where, like, my confidence really, like, I was like, okay, everything kind of slowed down. And then the, the match with Suzuki and Eddie Kingston, I slowed down even more, and it really, really started to click with me. So, yeah, last year, like, it really starting, it just going off of that, just continue to learn, so. And what was those three um those three opponents you had again? Can you name them for me again? Uh Mysterious Q. Y'all gotta watch that. Y'all gotta watch uh, that. My Nora Suzuki at AIW and Eddie Kingston at AIW. Y'all gotta watch that. Because you'll now definitely be able to relate. Go ahead, Marlon. Now with Suzuki, mm -hmm. did you know anything about him before the match? Cause I remember when they announced him on AEW, I was like, who the hell is that? And then the <laughs> video just and the way that was, it, it was like, oh, it's Menorah, he coming out against John Moxley. And there was, I'm just like, who? But they say yeah. he must have been a legend, but I, I, I never heard of him. So. Yeah, like, I was like that, like, um, when I started, but right before I started wrestling, like, if it wasn't like WWE or Impact or stuff like that, I wasn't too familiar with the independent circuit. But once I decided to pursue it, I started, um, you know, looking up people and stuff like that. And I'm really fascinated by the Japan um, style. So I became familiar with them um, uh, prior to that. So it was definitely a, a, a honor and a blessing. I'm very grateful to get the opportunity to share the ring with them. And, and yeah, because you, your style about mission with them, you know, the physical style. Oh, yeah, yeah. And just to take it back off of, off of the physical style, uh, Isaiah, what what made what uh what was the motivation for the character? Well, I, I kind of pretty much know what I like for you to tell me. Um, uh, just just me, like um, like all the. Well, my mindset is like I, 
I can do the flips and stuff, like everything everybody else can I, I can do it, but everybody's doing it. Right. And like there's it's like a handful of heavyweights that you can name out here that's actually hitting people in the mouth. And I'm I'm, I'm two sixty, two seventy. Like why would I why am I would be out here doing four fifties and stuff like you know what I'm saying? Like like just because yeah, just because I can do it doesn't mean I should do it. You know right, right, right. So it's just just bringing a different style to wherever I go. Because you most of these shows you look at, you're gonna see out of say eight matches, six of them gonna look the same. Right. Say, well, what are you gonna do to stand out? Or what can you do to make yourself look different for the most part? And that's I just started trending towards that style, that like smash mouth type style. That's a great mindset to have, bro. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. because like when you came down here for all Caribbean, that was my first time finally seeing you. And you know, I'm right there ringing, and I'm like, damn, this is a hard hitting. This, 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 <laughs> he he showed me a like, clip of you last hard. year, and you yeah. did a lariat. I don't call it, it had to be a lariat. That wasn't no clothesline. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, why were you on that? Why were you on that? What's the difference between lariat and clothesline? Uh, to me, the way. What I throw is a lariat. Anything else that like clothesline is like a transition move. Like people, like I, I, I put everything behind it. So if you oh, see me cock, good. if you see me cock back my arm, like I'm swinging to knock somebody's head off. So I think so it is just more, more good. power behind the lariat. Like, and you stretch I your was, arm out wider too, right? Oh yeah. Oh, Try yeah. to <laughs> as far as back Duncan. as I can. <laughs> <laughs> it may look so like it. So I know it's been some time, man. You, you don't legitimately, legitimately knock somebody out. Uh, I don't think so. Like I don't think so. I'm pretty. I think I'm pretty safe in the ring. So I know I, I the the object is to give you that visual that I knocked the hell out of them. But be I'm safe. Sure everybody's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, I ain't. I ain't trying to get that rap, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, they're reckless. Cause I, I'd be like, hey, if, if they tell me, hey, Marlon, you got Isaiah tonight, I'm like, oh yeah, make sure no, <laughs> make sure no disqualification, cause uh, I'm gonna be cheating my ass <laughs> off. Hey, listen, hey, we gonna, uh, hey, uh, listen, I'm a cheat. I'm hey, poking in the eyes, running out of the rain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <So> everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now on top of like, so now what's I seen you had an AEW experience. What was that like? It was dope, man. Like just to see how our bigger company runs and just to be able to be on the car it was it was dope. But like a couple times being on the car. So um I'm hoping in the future, whether it's there or somewhere else, you know, I'm able to transition to a bigger company. But it was a hell of an experience, man. Just everybody was professional, classy, you know. This is another learning experience, uh, working TV and working with uh, people that's on TV on a regular basis. And uh, very uh, grateful. The day of, what what was that day like for you, like mentally? I, like, what what kind of mood you was in the day of on the first time that you got on AEW? Um, if you just, get on the, just uh, hoping to get on the card, like, <laughs> <laughs> like they ain't put the card, like then they put up the card out maybe like an hour or so, mm -hmm. hour, hour and a half before mm -hmm. um, they started uh, taping. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't know, you know, just hanging around, just, you know, staying out the way, doing what I'm told. Um, put the card up, saw my name, and, you know, went from there. I was just, like, relieved and happy at the same time. You're smiling like a little kid in the oh, yeah. inside, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. What was, and, what, and what was that card at? What, what city you was in? Uh, I was in Detroit. Because okay. um, I, I had I had been to I flew down to Texas for a taping, but I didn't they I didn't get used that day. But mm -hmm. they came to Detroit um, the first time, and then the second time was in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yeah. So that was the biggest yeah. crowd you worked. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even, so, it's not even close. Not even close. So now, <laughs> close. so now, you go from that crowd. You on cloud nine, and your very next indie show. What's the, what's more <laughs> like? Okay, God dang, I was just in front of what five thousand people, and now I'm back to what? 
10, just, 20. It's just, it's just motivation that you want to get back to that big crowd. and But you take what you learn from that big crowd of that moment and try to find a way to apply it to going back on the indie circuit. Yeah, you know, I would just try to find positives out of every situation. That's how I look at it. So I don't look at it as a downer, you know, um, just like, okay, well, that was cool. Now I know, you know, my goal is to get there consistently. Right. And, you know, this is what I got to do in front of this crowd to get to that crowd. You know what I'm saying? So this is how I look at stuff. Um, just try to find the positives in it. When you do most of your traveling, like to your different events, how do you mostly get there? Like to drive, the the road trips, so you take planes, buses. Like, what's your normal transportation? Um, it's a mix between uh, plane ride. This depends on where where I'm at. Um, mostly by car. If it's if if it's reasonable, I just hop in the car or whatever. Um, been a few plane rides. Um, like to Georgia, Texas. Um, a couple other spots. Like if, if it's ridiculous, like I'm not about to drive no twelve. Man, hours. I hear you, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> I was just about to ask you, what's the longest road trip you took? We drove to Iowa for a show. Um, From where? For the Black Wrestler Matter show. Okay. Um, two years in a row to Iowa. The first year, I, it was cool up until we got to Iowa, and I didn't realize how long. Like it took to get from one point of Iowa to the other one. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's it. Probably part of Iowa. Yeah. I probably won't do that again. Probably can schedule a flight a flight. Yeah. And how do you how do you uh how you keep up your nutrition throughout all the traveling and stuff? You meal prep or you are you how you how you work that? Uh depending on I if I don't meal prep, um I just try to find somewhere so I can eat as clean as possible. Mm -hmm. um, Chipotle, Qdoba, or something like that. Um, hell, I, I, I'll stop at a Kroger and get a, a, one of those those roasted chickens, mm -hmm. and I'll go that way, or a GNC or something. I'll, I'll find ways to try to keep keep myself um, on point as, as as good as I can. Publix got good rotisserie chicken too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay. what's been at all the places you've done been? What's been the strangest? Mm. All this place. You talking about venue wise, right, Marlon? Venue wise, yeah. Or or a, a rowdy crowd or something like yeah. Um, Weird people, one person, anything. I don't say strange, but it's um. I did bless uh, bless storm in New Jersey. Um, it was pretty. It's pretty much like a death match. Uh, oh, predominant death match, and I think we were like the only regular. No, I think it was like two regular matches, but like they were, they were into the match. But like with them crowds, man, if you ain't busting no light tubes or nothing, man, it's just yeah, you ain't you. you yeah, you know. like they they. <laughs> You got like either beat the hell out of each other or just keep their attention, but that was just like a, a weird, uh, a different crowd, I should say. Um, but everything else pretty much been like uh, what I expected. Uh, you know what? Uh, the Juggalo show I did last year for ICP that was a different crowd. Not weird, just just different. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is it is just a different experience. So, so I see. Um, I like to ask the wrestlers this: What, what you, you know, take on in the gender wrestling? Like, is you you really down with it, or you just be like, hey, look, if it comes, it comes. It's it's cool. Like, I, I ain't got no problem. I had a couple with uh, me and Jocelyn. Like, we we even had a couple matches. Um, yeah, how did fun. how did that work out? Like, like it was, hey. it was dope. Like, this, like she she's really good. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's um. Like when you have like chemistry with people, it just flows naturally. So, like I don't have a problem with it. like the last little bit of the um, this Rumble uh, Battle Royal match I had uh, that we had Saturday. Um, I was in there with Steph Delander, so we had a little run in there. So it's cool with me, you know, as long as it's done right or whatever. Like I don't have a problem with it. Like 
like uh, a lot of the uh, female workers, they, they dope as hell on the um, on the scene today. So yeah, I, man, I was just gonna say that on the come up, it's a lot of them. Yeah. They good. Yeah, <laughs> they really like really good. They just don't get it. Either they don't get it as much shine as they should, or whatever. Or some people turn their nose up at energy and wrestling. I love it. Like all right, well, name, name a couple females we need to check out. Jocelyn, uh Navarro, uh Maserati. She's, she are she already my top five and and who that second one? Maserati. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and uh, everybody know that's my number one. So you just named two of my man, top crazy ten. about Maserati, bro. <laughs> and, and, and listen, we can all uh, listen, I'm I'm willing to train and get in the ring. So if you know you and Jocelyn want to do it against me and Mars, <laughs> y'all. Yeah, y'all gotta make me look good. Uh, I listen, I, 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 I'll be the I'll be the commentator. I just come <laughs> to But yeah, them, yeah so. uh, Trish, uh of course Willow, um Sandra Moon. There's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot of them out here. Um trying to think. my mind just went blank. Lady Moon, there's Casey down in Florida. Yeah. Um uh Promise Braxton down in yeah. Uh, oh, Texas. Yeah. And yeah. she is like really good. Like I would really love to see um her and Jocelyn. I just like love to see her in the area. Um but yeah, man, they out here they just like it is, it's, it, yeah, and it's just so amazing how much talent out there not on TV. You and that's why I, I finally got Mummy to come to the indie shows because he always wants to go to Big show WWE. I'm like, no, I'm going to the indie show. It's better. At least yeah. we you know we get to interact with them too afterwards. So mm-hmm. that's why the, I say the difference to me is what I like about the indie shows is that you right there. Every seat is a great seat, and then too you get to interact with the talent after the fact. Um, the the professional shows. I mean, you may be able to catch them before they go in the arena, either coming out. But there's really no like connection. They they start they try to do it a little bit, but if you ain't in the front row, it's like, you know what I'm saying. And the ticket yeah. prices be majority the same price, and the action is kind of better with the indie circuit. When Marlon um um invited me to it, I just fell in love with it because it's, it's right there in your face and it's good. It's good entertainment. Oh um, yeah. And if the storyline is good, like ACW killing it right now. If you ask me, they killing it, man. And so I was glad I was even introduced to that 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 life because you guys, it's a it's a whole big community. Oh yeah, you know? it seemed like everybody cool with each other. Oh yeah, it's just because everybody grinding, trying to exactly. Move up and, yep, and we we all know we all pretty much going through the sim, similar things, or whatever you know. So it's a grind, like brother and sister. So everybody on the same. For the most part, everybody on the same page, man. Just trying to come so, up. So, so you ain't never had no issue, a backstage issue with anybody. You know, you ain't got to tell nobody. Uh, or somebody just got your time and room or what? Mm-hmm. No, nah, I, I, nah, no, I'm cool with everybody, man. Like I, I don't, I don't get caught up in that stuff, man. I, I'm never, I'm there to work. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't want any of that tied to me. I don't want to be tied to anything. You know, I, I keep personal far away from business, so that right. ain't yeah, that, that ain't that ain't my uh, that ain't my niche right there. Hey, your, your 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 thing is if you don't like me, it's something wrong with you. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> I've accepted. Like everybody not gonna like me. Yeah, that's, that's true cool. at that's all. Just, yeah, that's, yeah. Just, that's that's fine. You know, if you get, you feel that way, cool. And we got to work together. Let's do business, and then after that. You go your way, I go my way. Simple as that. So, what I gets you hyped before that. the match? Like, who man, you listen just, to? What music wise? Like, I prefer every match. Like, I play Mini Man by Fifty Cent. So, it's either that. It's just depending on the day, man. Like, besides, like, Morley, Fifty, Nipsey Hussle. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Benny the Butcher lately, Conway, uh, Lloyd Banks. So, I push it to. You. Kendrick, yeah. So it's just depending on the day, man. I'll find some. So, so you, so so you don't really no dirty South artists. Yeah, um, I think like uh, I'm trying to think who I had. I've been having like like old Little Wayne in heavy rotation lately. Okay. Like um, gotta be old Wayne. Car- Carter one, Carter two, dedication one, dedication two, no selling but one. 
um, T.I., O.T.I. Uh, I've been like on the Ludacris kick lately too. Uh, kick lately too. Hey, the people sleep um, on Ludacris, man. U.G.K. There you go. Yeah. Diamonds and wood. There you go. There you go. Right that that on top right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, have you had uh, thus far? Have you had any type of? Uh, let's just say, what's been your most inspirational moment so far? Right. Um, coming back from this, the so uh, in twenty one, I tore my Achilles, and uh, you know, if anybody know, like you're supposed to be out for a year. I came back like in two months, twice. Oh, wow, wow! But I like, tore my Achilles and my mid meniscus. You came yeah. back in two months. You was really yeah. serious. I just Whoa. worked through it. Like, I, I just worked through it. So. That and I just tore it like uh, March 24th. I tore a tendon and the calf muscle and came back Saturday. I was supposed to be out for like a year. Damn. So stuff like that. So, man. So, like stuff like that, like this grinding and uh, a cyborg, to, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to take advantage, man. It's like people don't realize, like, basically learning how, like, with this injury so you have to kind of learn how to walk all over again yeah you do that's what that's what else you do yeah. you do man you, you yeah, can't man. Even take a bath how you want I have yeah, man, to help like, you. Yeah, walking is just walking from room to room is a job yeah but you know i got lucky uh bless you know to it wasn't as severe like i i didn't go the surgery route it wasn't uh the tear and the gap and it wasn't above five centimeters so uh -huh. i just they put a cast on it um and i just rehab and i rehab a couple times a day every day like six seven days a week so man i was playing semi pro football playing running back i had a little toss play i heard it first week of the season but i still played around about the fifth week i had a toss play got shoved out of bounce you know i'd be wet and kind of muddy in the little sideline mm -hmm. area pop tore everything mid meniscus yeah. and acl in the same knee so I can relate, bro. Oh my God, right? That's some pain, Marlon. You don't wish on your worst enemy, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I take y'all word for it. I don't heard too many. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't heard too many stories, so and I felt, yeah, I felt it just by y'all telling it. So, uh -oh. yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure Isaiah. You, I'm pretty sure I can I can speak for you when I say you the type you get hit or something happen, you get right back up with that. Yeah, um. <laughs> yeah I got, I got, like. When I tore this, like I still, it was like mid match, like, and I like it, it tore. Uh, I caught Cardona, um, I caught him F five down, and that was it. Just rolled out the ring, but yeah, like, I couldn't feel my like my heel, the bottom part of my heel, couldn't stand up for, like initially, so I let that sit for probably like thirty minutes, but I was able, like the feeling came back, I was able to walk out. Put it in the booth and rehabbing ever since. Yeah. Like and then even with burn, even too. with your injuries, do you still constantly get people talking about some that, that shit fake? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, like yeah. why, 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 I just took my meniscus. Now that's fake. And ain't, ain't enough proof. I got to show you my bill, <laughs> the medical bill. <laughs> yeah, they be like, yeah, you ain't do that during wrestling. You couldn't hang. I'm like, oh, okay. And I show him on tape. They're like, man, you probably was already hurt. I'm like, bro. <laughs> hey, Marlon, bro, tell him about your poor. experience in the ring. He, Marlon tried it one time. He tried to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> he tried yeah, it man. out. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was ready, but no. Nah, I'm like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give it to y'all. And then still being around the wrestlers, watching them train, I just be like, Damn, hey, y'all gotta y'all gotta give more credit and respect to what these people is doing because I mean one false movement is over. It, yeah. it, it, yeah. No matter how choreographed y'all think it is, man, you, and you gotta go. trust people too. You gotta yeah. trust people. Yeah. One wrong move, man. It's, it's hurting. So what's up? So now give us who who are you looking to face as it go on? Like dream opponents, um, Jacob, uh, Jacob Fatu, um, I let her like wrestle him. 
Um, I let her wrestle Eddie Kingston again down the road. Um, Ultimate Dream, because he's still kind of active. RVD, that man, that'd that'd be dope for me. Um, oh, in some form of match, uh, some form of fashion. Uh, Tuco Scorpio. Um, oh yeah. yeah, he still got it right now. He like, yeah. 60. yeah, I'm trying to get him. I'm trying to get him for he uh for he uh he hit the road MVP. Yeah, I know he uh he's saying he's gonna wrap it up soon. So I would really really like to get in the ring with MVP too. So pretty like but them 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 uh tops up on the list right now. I'd like to see you be a new addition to the Hurt business, bro, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> that'll be, that'll, that'll, he'll fit in perfect with them, man. The aggression and yeah, stuff. That'd that'd be dope. Dope. Yeah. Would, and on man. top of that, like, uh, how's basically, you know, you got people going by just one name. Did you ever just think about, say, fuck it, just let me go my Broner? Uh, yeah. That kind of, yeah. That's all kind of menacing, man. Yeah, I thought about it, but they, like, um, a couple of brothers like, nah, we want the the whole name. So I'm like, all right, well, yeah, that, I'm, I'm oh, okay. the, the whole name standpoint, that that looked like uh somebody coming out there making a statement, like Isaiah yeah. Broner. That's the the like Isaiah Broner. He plays no games. Isaiah Broner. It's serious. That's what the the Zero look. Trying to, yeah, yeah. I was trying to get a whole uh, Mike Tyson vibe. That's, yeah, no character. Yeah. This is who I am, yeah. Isaiah Broner. I'm me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. For sure. So we, Marlon, I know you normally do the Mount Rushmore. Yeah, we got time for. Okay, so what, what um, what's some of the what's some of the uh, what's some advice you could give somebody that's trying to be a wrestler that may be in the heavy like a heavyweight coming into it, want to try it out? What's some advice you can give them? Um, somebody two fifty plus. Up. Keep your ears open, keep your eyes open. Uh work to being a big man. Like all that, like I said earlier, like everything everybody else is doing don't mean you gotta do it. Um uh, always make yourself look big. Um uh, play to your strengths, your size. Um uh, yeah, just play to your strength and study people of your weight class. Try to find things that'll set you apart from that. Um, whether it's Brock, Vader, Bam Bam Bigelow, Umaga, whoever, like find those heavyweights, try to find things that you can stylistic, stylistically and, uh, uh, athletically take from them people and try to apply it to you and just keep your eyes and your ears open for advice and critiques and all that. Okay. All right. So now. Oh, you got go ahead, Mark. Yeah, so yeah, you know, we got three three forty five left. So give me the Mount Rush Mount Rushmore. How many got four? Uh four. I'm a shit now. Brock. <laughs> Sean. Sean Michaels. Eddie. I go Bret Hart. Okay. Yeah, that's that's different and I like it. You see like everybody talk about yeah with Bret Hart, Shawn Michael. You said Brock Lesnar, right? Yeah. That's that's different. That's new. That's a new addition. That's, that's a new one. Uh, fine. Somebody yeah. we ain't get Hulk Hogan from. Yeah. Man, you ain't go. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna get that from me. I tell you that right. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, we already. Yeah, you, you got somebody on the same side, page. You know? <laughs> yeah, we already on the same page. Finally, finally. <laughs> Probably somebody that understand my thinking with Hulk Hogan. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, me and him go at it with the Hulk Hogan thing. I, I, the reason yeah, why yeah, I, he, Hulk he Hogan me brought the branding in there, dude. All the him using that nigga stuff, I kind of got turned off from that. But I'm looking at the whole aspect of it. One for Hulk Hogan, you know, they came out with the wrestling man. He, he was the merch man. He the one made the merch come where wrestlers can get a little bit more money or a little pluck for their buck than just getting paid for the night. You know what I'm saying? That's why you know he was a trendsetter. But let me ask you this: What, what do you think about Bobby Lashley? Though you think you would like to get in in the ring with Bobby Lashley? Hell yeah! I think yeah, that'd man, be yeah. a good ass match too, man. You man, and Bobby, you and Brock, too. yeah, man, them would be good matches, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah, anything, yeah, like and I can learn a lot from both of them. You know what I'm saying? So that that would be a hell of a match. Because I'm look, I'm looking at the style, shit, even Gunther. Yeah, yeah, I take it like I study a lot of him too. Like um, he's like really 
really, really good, man. Yeah, he that dude. He that dude. He that yeah. assassin. We're about business. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, it don't look, it don't look like he do much, but it's the way he does. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. It it make it makes sense and it's, it's meaningful. Oh, yeah. Like I say, I'll be all for him and Roman. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. Other than that, like listen, Roman, Roman running. Like you know, you can't, you can't touch Roman right now. Nah, I know. Yeah. Fuck that Cody Rhodes bullshit. Hey, Cody Rhodes, nah, nah. I, 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 I just always right thought, now. I always thought Cody was dope anyway. So that's just, that's just my personal opinion. I, the only thing I I, don't, I got against Cody, he he his uh talk game, he got that lisp. I don't think he built for it. He just oh, he got that from Duffy. That's all. He <laughs> 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 got that from Duffy. It's cool. Hey, but man, hey, I, I definitely don't want everything to cut off on you, man. If you notice and pay attention to the questions that we asked you, we basically did uh, a, a resume. So you got wrestling promoters and people and stuff like that that watch the video. They can see what type of person you are. They can see your character. They can see your passion. And they can see, you know what I'm saying, what your mindset is as far as with the game. Um, as far as all your contact information, we'll definitely have that in the um in the description of this video. Um, when we okay. post it on there, bro, please do not be a stranger, man. This is your platform. Uh, whenever you got something going on, if you get merch and you're trying to promote it on a big scale, you can use us. Whenever you need to use us, we here, bro. Pretty I much. I appreciate that, man. And uh, I yeah, know you're yeah, real I big. I, I keep saying I want that 400 degree shirt, man. <laughs> I got you, man. I got you. I got to press some more up anyway. So thank you. you. Thank you so much for making time for us, bro. It mean a lot sure. to us, bro. And it mean a lot to the culture, man. You understand what's going on and we trying to grow together. So, man, thank you for your time. And like I said, I don't want you to be cut off. You enjoy your week. Ah. It really ain't shit to talk about. I do this shit for the street. Straight like that, though. Yeah, I'm Mr. Pyrex man. Got my chicken up, whipping up, dropping off and picking up. Nigga, what? My picture's still up on Seneca. Hit a lick and split it up. Ben's coupe, I tin it up. Spent more on jewels, cause I don't give a fuck. They think I'm good, cause I.